Welcome back. Today is a day off in the Delphi murder trial, but so many questions this morning in the case against Richard Allen as new evidence has been shared. Did he kill Abigail Williams and Liberty German back in February of 2017? We're breaking down the case this morning with IU law professor Jody Madeira. She's joining us this morning. Jody, always good to have you. Such an intelligent law professor and attorney with us. Let's dive into this new, possibly new piece or development yesterday that we have heard for the first time that came out during, at least to the public, during jury selection yesterday by Allen's attorneys. What did you make of them saying that there had been this hair found in Abby's hand that did not match Richard Allen. A lot of people say, why didn't we know about that before now? Is that just something that they're throwing out there to confuse people? Could it have been an animal's hair? What do you make of it? Well, I do think, you know, that by the way that the defense released that information, it is suggested to be a human hair. So it is suggested to be relevant. I mean, and so when a jury is being impaneled, basically, it's very common for both the prosecution and defense to sort of, you know, tip their hand a little bit and see what evidence they have, you know, start to construct the narrative. And again, there was a gag order in this case for a long time. And that gag order was often the subject of media coverage. So uh, I don't doubt that that is why the information did not become public before. But at the same time, I think, you know, it's a very good way for the defense to sort of watch potential jurors' reactions as well. Yes, because then they said, you know, what if you don't have DNA evidence? Could you convict? So you're hearing some of the questions that they were being asked. I want to talk about this because mm -hmm. this was also something that is really big part of a motion that was filed. Will the two mm -hmm. suspect sketches be available in court for the trial for jurors to consider? We're going to put both of those up. What do you think will go into the judge's decision? The prosecution does not want these two composite sketches to be used in the mm -hmm. trial. What do you think she will use to make her decision? Should they be or should they not be? Well, I think she will actually keep them out. So prosecutors want to keep these out for uh, some very good reasons. And, you know, first, uh, the first sketch was created in 2017, just on the basis of witness information. And that's very relevant here. And the second was actually released once uh, new information and intelligence came to light. And of course, uh, the prosecution is not planning to actually present the witnesses that helped to prepare the composite uh, sketches at court. And so basically they're saying, you know, we're really thinking that these are not relevant, they're composite sketches, and uh, we're not going to have a basis in which to introduce them in court, really. We're not planning on introducing these witnesses. So they just want the judge to bypass that if possible. Now, if the judge feels that those sketches are relevant, however, she will allow them in. Uh, but the danger, of course, according to the prosecution, is that they will be more uh, prejudicial to the jury. There, there is a danger um, that could sway the jury uh, instead of just helping the jury to get to the bottom of uh, find the truth in this matter. Yeah, which would be good for the defense, because if the defense could use them to say, I mean, do these look like the same person mm -hmm. even? Does it look like Richard Allen, for example? As we debate and look at that, I want to ask your opinion, too, on what you noticed so far um, in some of the discussions that we've heard that have come out of what the prosecution and the defense have talked to when they are picking their jurors. What do you make of the jury um, who's been chosen so far, men and women, and some of the questions that they've been asked? Well, I think this is a very, very complex process. And of course, uh, I saw the actual questionnaire that the jurors received in the mail prior to actually mm. even being chosen mm. to be one of the panel of, of potential jurors. And of course, it's it's of critical interest to Richard Allen and to the interests of justice that these individuals who are in panel do not have any preconceived notions of Richard Allen's guilt, that they haven't been necessarily following following the media and basically coming to a preconceived notion of guilt or innocence, in other words. And I think that these questions are necessary and detailed, and this process is sort of excruciating because it is so important. I mean, the, the result could potentially be a mistrial if they do this process uh, incorrectly. Yeah, and Jody, it was interesting to hear from some of our folks that have been in the courtroom to see that there were several, so many people that really did not follow this case, being from Fort mm -hmm. Wayne, you know, some of mm -hmm. us that follow it a lot assume that everybody knows all the details and the people mm -hmm. are like, you know what, we don't follow things as closely as you all do. As always, I appreciate you being with us and I'm listening to your thoughts and helping us get through this together. Um, we'll see you soon.
Thank you so much. You're welcome, Jody. For the latest on the Delphi murders trial, you can visit fox59.com and click on the Delphi tab there to watch the segment. More to if you missed part of it, fox59.com slash Angela Answers. And as always, Jim, trying to think of those two girls, Libby and Abby, that will forever be on our hearts and minds, especially the family as they try to deal with all of this being front and center of the news every day. Yeah.